Hi guys, Laura here. Um, I'm vlogging on my phone right now. Sam's at the barn with the girls. And I wanted to make a video from the hospital. Um, I wanted to take a little bit of time and explain to you guys what exactly happened or what I felt like happened um, with Stella and why I felt and how I got hurt. And um, I know some of you guys have different opinions about what you think happened. And so um, since I was the only one there and I was the only one that knew exactly what was happening as it was happening, I thought it'd be good to share my story. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to react to my fall video so that you guys can see what was happening and how it all went down. I'm just watching the video here. Um, so for the beginning of the video, I was running Stella. She was doing a little bit of spooking. Um, it wasn't terrible. Um, I was actually struck by how responsive Stella is. She's such a responsive horse. Um, if you just touch her a little, she goes. And um, something that's been happening lately since we started cantering Stella is that she is constantly asking me, do you want me to go now? Do you want me to go? Are we going now? Like she, she's on high alert for the time when I want her to go. And for some reason I feel like she must have done some kind of gaming horse activities or a bit of barrel horse just from the things that she does that she does really well. She is a high energy horse that is waiting for my every um, demand. She is so responsive, which is probably the biggest issue is that she is so responsive and because I'm a beginner um, my cues are not always accurate and I think she gets a little confused. guys might know that I um, recently dreamed that I was going to fall. I was going to have my first fall. I dreamed that I was on the ground at the barn laying along the rail um, and Stella had run off and so I knew it was coming. I didn't know when but I, um, as Stella starts to go at the minute I asked Stella to canter, I knew it was going to happen. I knew even before I fell that I was going to fall. I asked her to canter and she started to go and I was unbalanced. I wasn't prepared. When I asked her to go, I was not prepared. So what happens here is that Stella starts to go. I wasn't balanced. I started to bounce too hard. I, I may have started to lose a uh, stirrup. Um, and to compensate, I started to hold on with my legs tighter, so I started squeezing tighter and tighter, and the tighter I squeezed, the more Stella was saying, oh, okay, you want me to go faster. She was responding to my cues, and even though I was pulling back for her to stop, I was also holding on tighter and tighter, so she was confused. She didn't understand, and um, she was slowing down. She was getting ready to stop when I fell. And the really interesting thing that I want to talk about um, about my fall is that because I've never fallen before, I didn't understand how this worked. But um, I knew I was going to fall. I knew it was the day that I was going to fall. I knew I was get not getting away from this lesson without my first fall. But I wasn't scared. I knew it was going to happen. I thought I was going to fall and I would be just like... Uh, Sophie. There was a split second when I went around the corner and I started to slide to the side where I had to make a decision. I had to decide if I was going to use my body and try and gain leverage and climb back onto her back or if I was going to let go and bail. And it's not like I decided to bail. I didn't jump off of her. But at, in that exact second, I felt like I wasn't going to be able to hold on, so I let go. I just let it happen. I, 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 it's hard to explain, but there is a split second where you know it's going to happen and you have to make a decision on what you're going to do, and, and, and I just let it happen. And I saw it happening in my mind, and I thought it was going to land, and then it was going to be great, 
I was just gonna be, be stunned for a few minutes and then get up and be sore. Um, but what happened was completely not that. I landed and I started screaming. Um, Gabby was able to cut off the video at that point. Um, some of the things that you guys didn't see was that I said, I think I broke my pelvis and I was rolling around in agony trying to find a spot to lay that I wasn't in pain. It hurt everywhere. Um, if you guys are just tuning in now, I did break my pelvis in three different spots bilaterally. So on both sides of my pelvis are broken and then along the back wall of my pelvis is broken as well as my tailbone. So I have four breaks um, in my pelvis. Um, I immediately felt like my the, the back wall break of my pelvis was the most painful. I immediately felt like my leg was swelling, swelling because it was going right down into my leg, the pain, and I, I was screaming for them to take off my shoe. Um, Fiona tried to comfort me and I just kept screaming, a call the ambulance, and it was really, really traumatic because the whole time it was happening, Sophie was standing there holding on to Storm looking at me. She just watched the whole thing and and maybe not everybody is that way but she's a really sensitive loving little girl and it was killing her and, and she kept saying I can't watch this I can't watch this and she was crying and and I was trying to make her feel better even though I was in agony and I, I had to scream I was just screaming in pain for three hours I screamed in pain before I was able to get onto my back so that there wasn't so much pressure on my broken pelvis and um, I kept saying, Sophie, Mama has to scream just because it makes me feel better. And every single time that I would scream, I would see Sophie startle and shake and be so upset. Like, when she fell before, I I still can't even think about her falling without feeling sick to my stomach. And, and, and it's so traumatic. It's so traumatic to watch something like that happen to your parent. And... I was trying not to let her see me and fortunately our instructor was able to say you know you guys go get your horses blanketed while we wait for the ambulance and then she had them go let the ambulance into the gate and um, she she kept them busy she kept them going she got their mind on other things and it really helped but also this is the very first time that I've ever been away from them um, they're not used to being alone with dad they are He's wonderful with them, but, I mean, it's different. Like, I've been with them every single second. I, I'm their teacher. I'm their mom. I'm their, I'm their, I do everything with them. So, it's just been a big, huge struggle. Um, but I am starting to feel a little bit better, and she's going to have some training rides on her by two other people. We have two people, um, trained people, experienced people, who are going to be riding her at regular intervals and working with her. Um, I don't know exactly what the future holds for Stella and us, but she is our horse. She's not going anywhere. Um, she'll always be our horse, and eventually we will be at a point where either she will um, be more safe and we will ride her, or we will be better riders and we will ride her. Um, Stella, there's nothing wrong with Stella. She didn't do anything wrong. She was responding to cues. The only thing that isn't really great in this situation is that Stella is trained to, Stella is not a beginner horse. I mean, when we first got her, she was amazing, but she is a really fast horse. She's a very responsive horse. She's the kind of horse that if I knew what I was doing, I would want Stella. Um, she, we're going to get a horse that um, when the rider starts to be unbalanced, we'll slow down or we'll stop. Nothing that happened was Stella's fault. I don't blame Stella. I love Stella. I can't wait to get her, my arms around her and, and visit with her. I miss seeing her eyes. I, I worry that she feels sad or that she, you know, misses us. And I know some people will say the horses don't think like that, but, um, I don't know. I think that she definitely has a bond with us and that she does miss us when we're not there. And I do feel a little worried about um, if she's going to be, be being ridden by people that are not us. But we will still spend all of our time with her. Sophie will still love her. Sophie will still groom her and tack her up and take care of her. Um, things are going to change, but she's still ours and it's just going to be a little bit different. 
anyway thank you guys so much for watching and again for all your pray prayers before i go i'm going to show you guys my view i have the best room um so far here um the bed has been vacant next to me so um i asked for a private room um and they don't really have private rooms they save them for people who need isolation so we don't can't really have a private room um so this is a semi-private but so far nobody has been next to me so i've been having a lot of family and friends in um i have the window bed and this is my view out the window here i don't know if you guys can see but there's a little park out there and the bay is out here I have a big, huge, long window. I got some flowers there that the kids brought me. Um, I have a TV here as well. I have a, oops, I have a really exciting bed. It's like for trauma people. Um, it is air, it's all air, so it holds my body off of my pelvis so I'm not laying on a mattress. It's still not super comfortable because I'm laying, laying on broken bones, but, um, but, I'm, but I appreciate it. My nursing care is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I can't even imagine. My doctor is probably one of the best doctors I've ever had in my life. Um, he is attentive. He is listens to everything I say. He has plans. He's amazing. My physio is amazing. Like, it's just, it's just been an amazing process and my family and my friends have rallied around me you guys as well um i have people that i don't even know very well have offered to bring me food and and to come and visit me and it's just been such like i cannot believe the people who have rallied around me and my family and offered to help us and take care of the girls and do stuff for us and take the girls to the barn when sam can't and it's just been incredible like you don't know how lucky you are and how amazing your life is until something happens and so many people rally around you but anyway that is it for this video um i just wanted to tell you guys what happened so you guys know and um know our plans for the future and um thank you guys so much for being there for being a part of us and for um holding on while i get better and um, obviously our vlogs are going to change just a tiny bit because Sam will be doing a lot of them but best but know that as soon as I can get to that barn even if it's in a wheelchair I'll be seeing our horses again see you guys later and don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below